Hey everybody, this is Strategy Wizard and this is my son Nathan. Hello. Today we're going to be doing a review of Onitama. This is a game designed by Shinpei Sato, if I'm hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's for two players. It's for ages 14 and up. In this case, yeah, for to, to really be good at it, that's probably true, but I help Nathan and he and he can work with it because it's it's fairly straightforward as you'll see. They say it's 15 minutes long, I agree with that for the most part. This is a Dice Tower Essential. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. A Dice Tower Essential means that the Dice Tower has decided, Tom Vassell in particular, has decided that this is a game that he thinks is an essential game for most gamers, I guess is the best way to put it. So, let's see if we agree with his um, opinion there. So, it says it's an elegant game, an elegant and simple game of martial tactics. Well, to me, this game basically is a an upgrade of chess let's say it gives you that same abstract feeling but it gives it a little more intrigue i think so let's go ahead and go to the table we'll look at it we'll see what we think and we'll let you know if we agree that this should be an essential in your collection okay so i'm not starting off by showing you how the game looks when it's set up because i want to show you how this opens up just because i think it adds some i, th I think it's just kind of cool to see and that way you can see the inside so we're going to start off by opening it It has a little mag magnet over here that seals it the instructions are here nice and tall and long which fits perfectly and then we've got the cards in this bag we've got pawns here that we're going to pull out in the insert Okay. Then we have the, <clears throat> the board, if you will, but really it's more like a, the mouse pad type material. It feels really good and soft. I like that a lot. And then we've got the two masters of their karate, jujitsu, or whatever else they might be doing. So we'll move that out of the way. Just wanted to show you how that looked on the inside because I think that's really nice. Okay, so Hey, whenever you set it up, I'm going to put this here. The red player is going to have their master at their home base, at their uh, dojo, I suppose you could say. Thank you, Nathan, for helping putting them on that side. You're welcome. The pieces themselves are very simple looking and generic, but they feel nice. They have a almost a rubbery, a really hard rubbery feel to them. They don't, they're not like hard plastic, so I like the way they feel. So basically what's going to happen is you're going to take this deck of cards. Now these cards, I have the expansion and I have some of those cards mixed in here, so you don't get quite as many in the base game as what I show here, but I'm going to go ahead and pull out some that come in the original, I'm, at least I'm pretty sure. They don't mark the ones that are in the expansion, so it's not necessarily so easy to know which ones are which, but that's that's okay. We'll we'll still be able to figure this out. Let's see. Now the thing is these cards, what makes these cards interesting is that because there's so many, you have a variety of different techniques and moves that you can make. So let's say we dealt out these five here. It's going to be different every time precisely because you deal out five random cards. Now, here's some examples. We have the ox. The ox says if you're here in the black space, you can move up one, move one to the right, or move back one. The rooster lets you move one to the left, or back into the, I mean, left and down, or right, or right and up. You can choose. You don't have, you can choose any of these four spots. It's not like you have to jump over anyone. You just say, I'm going to move here. It doesn't matter if anyone's in your, quote unquote, in your way. The elephant can move, like with elephant tusks, essentially, moving forward that way. And then the dragon, which is a pretty special one, can let you move up and to the left twice, or up and to the right twice, and move diagonally backwards in both directions. And the crane, as you can see, diagonally backwards and for straight forward once. So let, now what's going to happen is each person, each player is going to get two cards. And one will be out in the center. The one up here in the center, no one can use at the beginning. Now how you decide who goes first, the card that gets dealt out here, well, it actually might be, I don't even remember this rule, but it's not so important. It's either the card that goes there or you just randomly pull a card. Whatever the color is of this symbol that decides if it's red or blue who goes first. So if it would have been this card, 
blue would have gone first, or if it would have been this card, red, etc. But either way, that's basically how you find out who goes first. Once you decide that, or once that's decided for you, you start playing, and it'll be, in this case, let's say red goes first. So I might say, hmm, I'm going to use the rooster. So I play the rooster. I say, I'm going to move this pawn here, because as you can see, I, could, I can move him sideways and then forward, which I have done. Now this card goes into the center, and now I take the card that was uh, in the middle. So as you can see, as you play, you're going to be rotating out what moves you can make. Now Nathan, what would you do? Okay, so let's see, the dragon could be pretty helpful right now. I could move, let's see, I could move this way. One more. I think I'll move right there. Okay, so he's going to use the dragon to move up one and over to the left twice. So I got the booster now. Okay, so he swaps out. That's and, good. And now I'm going to be able to get the dragon in a second here. Now, as you're playing, you're moving along with your pieces, and you can move backwards, as you can see, and it, with some cards. And the goal is to either eliminate all other pieces, and doing so is as simple as, let's say I had a piece here, and I played the elephant. I can move over and forward. I could take him. If I take all of his pieces, then I would win the game. Or I can, if your grandmaster gets taken, that will make you lose. Or if, well, which I guess that's kind of the same thing. If you lose all your pieces, your grandmaster is gone. But the point is, elimination of all the all the opponent's pawns is a way to win. Or you can move your grandmaster onto the base of your opponent. And if you can, win. And then you'll win immediately. So basically, it's destroy the opponent's grandmaster or move your grandmaster onto their home base. So in this case, I might say, hmm, I think I'll move... I'll use the elephant to move here. Now I get the dragon. Now the dragon is a powerful card precisely because there's so much movement available to it. It's, it can move very far. Yeah, I'm, that's pretty powerful. So I'm excited to have it. Now the thing is, once you have a good card like that, or you know, I perceive it as a good card, other people may not see it as being as good as I think, but whenever I have a good card like that, it makes me less likely to want to play it just because I don't want my opponent to get it. So you have this thing going on where you, you're excited to have good cards, but you also don't want to play the good ones because you don't want your opponent to have them in their arsenal. You want to save them for the right moment for a good strike. Now, Nathan, what would you do next? I would, uh, let's see, I got the booster, and that would make it to where I could go here, but you could get me. So I don't want to go there. That's right. And of course I can't go right here and go back. So what I'll do is move, let's see, I'm going to move right here. Yep, with which card? With this one. That's right. The crane will let you move there. So you now are going to have the elephant. And this goes to the, I don't know what it's called. And now maybe I would use the dragon and I would go way over here and capture your piece. And then my dr the dragon comes here. But that's bad for you, though. Yep, because now not only is he going to be able to get me, but now the dragon will be in his hands. So which what would you do now? Th now I'm going to do this and I'll capture one of your guys. Well, you have to actually land on the spot that I was at. Oh. And which one would you use to do that? I would use this one, the elephant. Yep, you could have used either one, but yes, you can use the elephant, and then you get the dragon. So that's how the flow of the game works. You're constantly making your choices, trying to eliminate each other's pieces and maneuver your master to get into that, the, 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 the base of your opponent. Right. So that is how you play. It's very straightforward. It's pretty quick. And like I say, because of the cards, it's constant. each game is different because you never know what cards are going to come up. In my case, since I have the expansion, I have even more cards, which add some pretty unique movements that aren't you know, in, available in the original. So that being said, let's go ahead and go back up top and we'll explain to you what we think and tell you, is it really an essential? Okay, so now that we know how to play, what do we think? Nathan, do you like the components in this I, game? I do. You like the pieces, you like the mat, how it's kind of soft and spongy? Yeah, I really like soft and spongy. Yeah, it makes it, it's just fun to have something soft and not a big hard board. It's just cool to have that sometimes. Yeah. And it feels nice. It does feel nice. Now, what do you think about the, I guess, the, the replayability? Do you think this is a game that you could come back to and play several times and enjoy it each time? I think so. Okay. Why do you think so? Because you can move tiles, and I think that's really fun. I think that's really good. What? what you can move what? 
the tiles, you know. You mean the pawns? The pawns. Yeah, you can move the pawns, and you and and using the cards to do so is interesting because how you can move your units changes all the time. You play a card, and then your opponent will be able to use that card in a little bit. So whenever you play, you're knowing you're giving your opponent that card in very soon. So it's a very interesting mechanic. Now, what do you think as far as the st the strategy element? Do you think it's a do you have to use a lot of your brain power to do well in this game? I do. Why do you think so? Because the the moving stuff, I'll have to get a little used to that, but uh. I think I can do it. I'm pretty good at it. You think you can do it? I think I can do it. It's definitely, at first, I'll say, whenever we first, I first introduced this to Nathan, it took him a little while to kind of understand how he could move with the cards, but the more I explained it to him, the more he realized how the movement works, so now it's a lot easier for him. And honestly, he does a pretty good job, and I still have to help him, help him out a little bit to see what the good moves are, but... Still, he understands and he's using this as a way to learn how to play this type of abstract strategy game. So, I would definitely say st strategy-wise it's 100% because there's, there's no luck involved unless you count the fact that the initial pull of the cards is random, but once they're there, you have all the information. You know what you can do, you know what your opponent can do, and you know when you play a card and it goes out here, you know your opponent's going to get it. So there's never a time where you don't know something. It's just very challenging to think ahead and see if I play here and let him have that card eventually, how is that going to play out? It's hard to do that, and it's fun to try to figure that out and do the best that you can, especially on such a small board. It's so small, just a few pieces, and they all do the same thing. So I, And I like the fact, you know, going back to replayability, that the cards are random, and so it's always there's always a chance that, you know, there's going to be radically different choices available. There's only one in the base game that lets you move two spaces in front. If that's in there, that automatically makes that game very different than any game that doesn't have it. And then there's other, and then whenever you have the dragon, which lets you move way out to the side, uh, forward and two to the side, that's powerful because, you know, there's a few of them that are just extremely unique, and if they do come up, they change the game big time. If they don't, then it's going to be a more structured and, and close-moving game. So the point is, it changes a lot how you play, and yet the strategy is 100% every time. So I like the fact that it changes each time, and yet you're always still in into the strategy and trying to figure out what to do. So, Nathan, what do you think about this game? What would you rate it? I would rate it uh, 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10? Mm -hmm. So you like it, but you don't think it's just great. Yeah, I don't just think it's just great. Okay, and I, and I can understand why he thinks that. Maybe once he gets older, he may or may not change his mind. We'll see. For me, I would definitely rate this an 8.5. This is a game that I really, really enjoy. It's not just absolutely perfect for me because I'm not a big fan of abstract games in the first place, but... I really think this one does a great job of keeping the, the balance and yet in, interesting uh, flowing nature of the gameplay. So for me, for a strategy game that's abstract, this one rises above the rest for sure. So I agree with the Dice Tower Essential label. Why? Because for an abstract game to be so quick and so effective and be different every single time due to those cards, it is an essential if you're interested in a good abstract game. That's where I would have to agree. So, that being said, we both enjoy Onitama. I like it more. And hopefully this review helps you decide if you like it in the meantime. Maybe I might bump it up a little. Maybe maybe 6 out of 10. That's what you said the first time. Huh? Oh. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay if you think it's 6 out of 10, Nathan. That's good that you're consistent. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if, if you think it's 6 out of 10, that's fine, because right now, they say it's for ages 14 up, so you'll you'll get there as you get older. You'll understand better how to play. So, that being said, hopefully this helped you all, and I look forward to doing the next one. Hopefully you're here to see that one, and if you like the video, we'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe down below. And in the meantime, I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye. Bye.